today you know i want to specially touch on that you know continue on that topic as you know the world in which we live the world was created by god uh, you know god didn't create and just take his hands off you know the god who created the world god is sustaining the world by his power likewise you know even our spiritual life you know without the work of the holy spirit in us you know our spiritual lives will go back to deadness we will become dead once again you know if the holy spirit ceases to work in us so like you know the father is working in the world the spirit's work in our life is vital <clears throat> but before we get there you know the scripture and all that i just want to share something about the holy spirit this morning you know on the day of pentecost the holy spirit you know there was a noise or the sound of a wind and there was fire so sometimes you know people tend to think holy spirit as a force or some kind of power but the bible is very clear that the holy spirit is a person you know he has he has a personality he is a person he has emotions you know he has a mind he has a will he knows the deep things of god he loves the saints he loves you and me the holy spirit of god he makes decisions we see that in the scripture book of acts constantly making decisions he speaks he prays he teaches he guides and he commands you know he fellowships then the bible says holy spirit is the one who comforts us and also he can be grieved because he is a person you can grieve the holy spirit and you can quench him you can quench the work of the holy spirit in your life and you can lie to the holy spirit you know ananias and sapphira you know they lied to the holy spirit and you can test the spirit of god you can resist you know when the holy spirit speaks to you convict you sometimes we can resist the work of the holy spirit in us and we can he can be blasphemed you know all of these things tell us that holy spirit is a person and number 2 you know he is not only a person he is also god he is one of the three persons in the trinity and he shares all the attributes of god you know holy spirit is uh, omnipresent he can be present everywhere all the time you know today many services are happening in the city all over the world people are meeting everywhere the holy spirit is present not only in churches but in the whole world he is omnipresent he is omniscient he knows everything like god the father who knows everything the holy spirit knows every detail of your life my life and every person in the world he is all powerful and also you know he is all powerful you know like the father god he is he is powerful so the holy spirit he is not only a person but he is also god himself he is equal with the son equal with the father you know some tend to think you know because he comes last like you know you first mention the father then the son then the holy spirit some tend to think you know he is someone least or less than the father and the son but the bible is very clear he is god himself god is one but they operate in three persons and the holy spirit is god himself so in the beginning you see in the book of genesis the holy spirit was active in creation you know in genesis chapter 1 we see when the father created the world the holy spirit was active then in the old testament you find the holy spirit you know came and indwelt in the lives of the prophets you know it came if you read the book of ezekiel the holy spirit came and filled the prophet ezekiel in the life of samson the spirit of god came upon him so we find you know the holy spirit working in the old testament then you see that when jesus came into this world uh, you know he was involved in the life of in the birth of jesus the holy spirit was involved in the birth of jesus he was involved in the baptism you know when jesus christ was baptized in river jordan the holy spirit was there then in the anointing when jesus was anointed you know the holy spirit came upon him as a dove and then you find that when jesus ministered you know his teaching when he performed miracles he all did everything by the power of the spirit then the bible says in the book of hebrews you know when he went to the cross 
The Bible says he went by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit of God strengthened him, you know, to go and die on the cross. Then the Holy Spirit was involved in the resurrection of Jesus. You know, after three days, the Spirit of God, the Bible says he raised Jesus from the dead. And then, of course, today, you know, the Spirit of God is involved in the world. You know, convicting people. How does people come to Christ? How do people receive Christ? It's the work of the Holy Spirit. When you preach the gospel, you know, when you share the gospel with the Holy Spirit, is the one who draws people to Christ. And he draws people to service. You know, Paul, you know, was going, killing people, but intervened. Then the Holy Spirit came upon him. And he said, I'm setting you apart. As an apostle to the nations, you know, God set him apart. Then in the lives of the believers, in your life, the Holy Spirit is involved. He is the one who imparts the, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, you find in Galatians chapter 5, the character and the nature of Christ. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Everything is imparted to you by the Spirit of God. Then also the Holy Spirit imparts to you the gifts of the Spirit. You, know, you have in you the gifts of the Spirit. Who does that? The Spirit of God. So remember, you know, the Holy Spirit is everything. Without Him, nothing will happen. You know, nothing will work in your life. If the Holy Spirit does not work, your Christian life will come to an end. You will revert back to deadness and you will revert back to sinfulness. But the Spirit of God is the one who recreated you. The Spirit of God is the one who made you to be born again. And He is the one who will help you to walk this life. Help you to walk as Jesus wants you to walk. You know, the Paul writing to the uh, Galatians, you know, he says, you know, what you began in the Spirit, are you now trying to complete in the flesh? You know, what the Spirit began, you know, we have to continue in the Spirit. It's the Spirit of God who will help us. You know, sometimes, um, one of the things, you know, today what I thought was many times, you know, we ask the Holy Spirit to come. Many times, you know, we pray for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Um, that's all okay. That's all good. But sometimes we also must remember and we must understand what He has already done in your life. And we need to accept that by faith. And this morning, you know, I thought to, to share some thoughts from the book of Romans. You know, if you have your Bible, turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Uh, you know, the book of Romans, the main theme of the book of Romans is justification by faith. You know, Paul writing to the Roman church, you know, may all the churches was planted by Paul except the church in Rome, uh, which, uh, you know, the Gentiles and the Jews in the city of Rome came together and they, this church was birthed there. Paul never went and planted this church. But since he was planning to go to Spain, uh, he had thoughts. Uh, he will be passing through Rome. So before going, you know, he wrote this epistle to the Roman church while he was in the city of Corinth. Uh, how do I say, you know, he wrote it from Corinth? Because all the names that you find in the book of Romans, whatever, whoever the names Paul mentions, they are all Corinthian believers. So uh, the assumption is that he was in Rome when he wrote. The main theme of the book of Romans is justification by faith. What Paul was saying in the book of Romans is you are justified by faith alone, in Christ alone, uh, trusting in the work, the finished work of Jesus Christ, you are justified. That means you are just before God. That's the theme of the book of Romans. But if you come to chapter 8. So from chapter 1 to chapter 7, Paul's main focus was what Jesus did on the cross. You know, from chapter 1 to 7, Paul explains to the Roman church what Jesus accomplished for them, for their salvation on the cross, the work of Christ. But when it comes to chapter 8, Paul begins to speak about the Holy Spirit of God. Now up to chapter 7, only once he mentions the Holy Spirit. 
but when it comes to chapter 8 romans chapter 8 the holy spirit is mentioned 20 times why because up to chapter 7 paul spoke about what christ accomplished for the believers on the cross but it's the holy spirit who can make that a reality to you and me is the holy spirit who can confirm to you what jesus has accomplished for you on the cross that's why in the book of romans chapter 8 it's all about the spirit of god it's a great chapter it's a chapter you know that really takes you to the heights you know where it gives you a picture of the victorious christian what you can be in christ what the holy spirit has accomplished in you and the first thing so i want to lay out this morning i thought you know instead of asking you to receive and all that you must know what the holy spirit has already done in your life what the holy spirit has already accomplished in your life now in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 1 uh, it says here there is there are therefore no condemnation now exists for those in Christ Jesus uh, now in some of the bibles like if you have a naive view therefore there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus then in verse 2 he says because the spirit's law of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death so paul begins this chapter by saying there is therefore now no condemnation you know one of the thing that happened to you when you were born again the thing is that you are not condemned anymore now what is the condemnation that paul is talking about here condemnation means now in this chapter paul is talking about the judgment the final judgment that comes from god to all the unbelievers now if you are not saved the bible is very clear if somebody is not in christ if somebody has not accepted the lord jesus christ that means you come under the condemnation of god you come under the judgment of god if you read romans chapter 1 verse 18 Let's turn to 118 Paul says here for God's wrath is revealed from heaven against all godlessness and unrighteousness of people who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth so Paul is speaking here about the judgment of God that is going to be revealed that means at the end of the age you know at a certain point you know god is going to judge this world and some people will go to hell to eternal damnation why because they come under the wrath of god they come under the judgment of god but paul is saying here because you are born again this morning because the holy spirit has recreated you because you have become a new creation in christ jesus there is therefore now no condemnation for you you will not be judged you will not be condemned you will not go to hell if you are a new creation in Christ Jesus if you have accepted the lord jesus christ your destiny is heaven and god has chosen you to be part of his family he is not going to condemn you he is not going to judge you why because you have become a righteous person you are justified you are righteous therefore you know you can enter into a heaven so the first thing that the holy spirit has accomplished in your life this morning is when he recreated you what god says is you don't come under the penalty the final penalty who has given this verdict who has given this verdict it is not something that man has given but it has come from the very throne room of god the highest court in the universe which is the highest court you know there are many attributes today some people spoke about god the father god is a father and there are many ways you know god is described 
But one of the pictures about God in the Bible is that He's a judge. One day He's going to appear as a judge. And here in the book of Romans, the word condemnation is used in the courts. You know, when two people are, um, you know, the, um, an accused is brought and the lawyers are arguing on both sides and once everything is over, the judge has to give a verdict. You're guilty or not guilty. And here, God from heaven, is given the verdict. What is the verdict that he has given? You are not condemned. You are not under the wrath of God. You are not condemned. You are not under the judgment of God. God is not going to send you to hell. God is not going to punish you. You, you know, all the sins, the sins that you committed in the past, the sins that you are committing now, the sins that you will commit in the future, everything has been laid upon the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Therefore, you know, there is now no condemnation. So it's a good news. It's an exciting news. Aren't you happy this morning? Aren't you glad this morning? I don't see like you're excited or happy or glad. But if you read, you know, if you know the terribleness, if you know the terribleness, the fierceness of coming under the wrath of God, coming under the judgment of God, because you don't hear much about the, uh, much about the wrath of God or the judgment of God. Of course, now today in the morning, in the growth tracks, especially the men, uh, we discussed a lot about the wrath of God because whenever God sent a prophet, he always spoke about judgment. You know, wrath of God. I'm going to judge. But today morning, God is telling, you know, you are under no condemnation. You know, this word condemnation is only used in the book of Romans three times. And all has to do with, it's a judicial term where you're not guilty but you have been declared free, justified, no condemnation. And Paul says, the reason why you are not condemned, the reason, why, how can Paul say that? We are all sinners, we have turned away from God. How can Paul say that, you know, you are not condemned? You know, that's what you see in verse 2, because the Spirit, remember the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has done a work in you. That is why you are not condemned. The Spirit, law of life in Christ Jesus, has set you free from the law of sin and death. So the Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came into your heart, when you were born again, what did the Holy Spirit do? He set you free. Set you free from the penalty of God. Set you free from the judgment of God. Set you free from the condemnation of God. And he spoke to your heart and he said, you are now the child of God. So you have been set free. So this is already done. The Holy Spirit has set you free. So that is one of the reasons why, you know, you cannot be condemned. Of course, you may fall into sin. I have to be careful here. You know, sometimes some preachers, they don't preach this message of no condemnation because they tend to think, you know, it will give a license for people to sin and, you know, treat God's word lightly. But I believe if you are truly born again by the power of the Spirit of God, if anyone is born of God, he cannot sin. He cannot sin. 1 John, the book says, you know, he cannot sin. Why? You know, once you are born again, the Holy Spirit gives you a new nature, a new desire to obey God. And you are set free. So remember in the passage here when Paul says, you know, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death means you have been set free from the dominion or the power of sin in your life. You know, dominion and power means, you know, the person who, if you take, for example, the person who lives out there, out in the world, you know, he has no power to overcome sin. Why? Because he has not been set free. 
he is still under the dominion he is still under the power of sin but for a christian the power has been broken the dominion has been broken yes the sin is still present the sinful nature is still there the uh, the fallen adamic nature is still there but the good news is it has no power over you it has no authority over you why because the spirit of god gives you the power to overcome and you have been set free this morning so paul is saying here one of the great things about the work of the holy spirit in your life so you constantly you don't have to be crying you know lord set me free set me free fill me fill me what god is saying here is i have already set you free my spirit has set you free the moment you got born again the law of the spirit of life is the gospel the law of the spirit of life is the good news and the moment you received god into your heart the holy spirit into your heart you know you were set free and this is a work that the holy spirit has done in your life hallelujah so remember you know every time you know sometimes the the enemy will come and lie to you and tell you that you are not free the enemy will tell you you are still bound the enemy will tell you you know you will never shake off this habit but remember the one who is within you is greater than the one who is in the world who is in you the holy spirit of god and he will set he has already set you free he has given you the freedom but we must accept this you know we accept the gospel by faith we ac- accept you know our salvation by faith even this work of the spirit to experience in us we must accept this truth by faith uh you know they say in the states when abraham lincoln you know signed the emancipation you know the freedom of the slaves the blacks um you know many of them didn't know many of them uh, were in the dark they didn't know that they have been free you know legally they have been set free so still they were working as slaves and their master said oh you can't go you have to be a slave you have to be under me and most of them out of ignorance for many years though they have been set free by the legally by the government they continue to serve as slaves likewise you know for us also you know god has set us free but very often you know the devil will come and tell us no you are not free you don't have the freedom and we will keep us in bondage so what i want you to do is you know go home get into this chapter romans chapter 8 here the holy spirit of god who dwells in you he is the one who has inspired this chapter and here paul mentions 20 times who never speaks anything up to chapter 7 about the holy spirit he speaks about the marvelous work of the spirit of god 20 times he mentions about the holy spirit so the holy spirit is the one who confirms the status of your no condemnation he is the one who tells you he is the one who confirms you know you you buy a land or you own a land or something you know somebody comes and asks you how can you say that you own this land immediately what will you do how can you say you are the owner then you will take the deed and he will tell you you know the deed says you know i am the owner likewise the holy spirit you know god has set you free the holy spirit will conform to you he will confirm what jesus has accomplished he will confirm and say you are free so whom christ has set free he is free indeed free indeed amen So then you find in verse 3 Romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 3 what the law could not do since it was limited by the flesh God did he condemned sin in the flesh 
by sending his own son in flesh like ours under sin's domain and as a sin offering in order that the law's requirement would be accomplished in us. So what Paul is saying here is, you know, when the law was there, you couldn't keep the law. You couldn't obey the law. The law showed you that you are doing something wrong. Uh, you know, you have the board there. You know, you car, you know, on the road, you have a board, you know, 40 miles per hour. You know, something like that. So that's the law. Uh, the law can only tell you, don't do this, don't do that. But the law can never give you the power to overcome. But here Paul is saying, because the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you, now you are able to fulfill the law of God. Fulfill the law, law of God. You are able to obey the scriptures. You are able to obey the commands of God. God is not giving you all the instructions and sitting in heaven and saying, now you better do all this. But God is saying, I am giving you, but also I am giving you my Holy Spirit. I am giving you the power. I am giving you the strength. So what Paul is saying, what the law could not do, what the law could not do was the law could not give you victory. The law could not do, give you power. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. That means Jesus came, you know, he didn't become sinful until he, all our sins were laid on him on the cross, but he became like a man, you and me, and he died on the cross, then he ascended to heaven, he sprinkled his blood in the mercy seat of God, and then God was able to pour out his spirit, the Holy Spirit, upon you and me, and now we have the power to fulfill the law of God. So that is another second thing. You know, number one, how do you know that you are not condemned? Number one, you are set free. Number two, you are able to fulfill the law of God. How? By the power of the indwelling spirit. That's the revelation God gave to prophet Ezekiel. Prophet Ezekiel looked at all these dead bones. God told him, you know, go and prophesy. And he didn't know what to do. How can he prophesy? It's impossible. Why? If there's a little bit of life, you know, you can put a respirator or something, you know, bring it back. But here, there's no life. It's total deadness. Dead bones. And bones are also scattered here and there. You know, one person's bones, another person, all mixed, scattered, everything. It's all spiritual deadness. Now, that is how we were. But now God says, I have given you life by my spirit who is dwelling in you. And now the Holy Spirit is going to give you the power to fulfill my word. Obey my word. To keep my word. So you have been set free for a purpose. You have been redeemed for a purpose. What is that purpose? Now the Spirit of God is going to empower you. Spirit of God is going to strengthen you. Strengthen you for what? To fulfill the plan and the purpose of God. So that you may obey God and fulfill the will and the plan of God. Now, uh, if you look at this, Ephesians, <clears throat> look at Ephesians 2.10. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto, what? Unto? Ephesians 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works. So you see, that is the purpose of redemption. That the Spirit of God has come into your heart so that you, know, you can do good works. Then Titus 2.14, we have no time to turn everything, but you, make it, you can note it down, but go home and read these passages. Titus 2.14, where Titus says, in order that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a people of his own, zealous of God, zealous for good works. So God has redeemed us for a purpose, to be zealous for good works. 
So, what is the purpose of you being re recreated? And one is, you know, you are redeemed so that, you know, you may obey God, you may manifest the righteousness of God. What does it mean, manifest righteousness of God? That means right living. You live righteously. You manifest righteousness. Why? Because you have been made righteous. Then also you obey. Obey the law of God. Obey the word of God. And also you manifest good works. You know, all that, it begins from inside. The spirit of God begins from inside, but it has to come out. You know, I like all these Puritans, you know, the Puritans who lived in the 15th, 16th century. Uh, they are called the Puritans, you know, they focus more on holiness and all that. And one of the things that they said was, you can never separate justification and sanctification. It's all both together. If you are justified, you are also sanctified. Sanctification is what? Every day you are becoming more and more like Jesus. You are changing. Your behavior is changing. Your attitudes are changing. The way you speak, the way you talk, the way you walk, everything is changing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit of God who dwells in you is working out. Paul says, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? Because it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. So the Holy Spirit is not just there. You know, you, you have to remember that he is there and he has set you free and he is there to help you to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God for your life. Amen. So this morning, you know, I have no time to tell everything that the Spirit of God has done, um, but I'll give you a list. One is he frees us from sin and death. I shared with you, he enables you to fulfill the law. He enables you to fulfill the law of God. Then, of course, he changes your nature. You had the sinful nature, now he gives you a godly nature. So you can act like God. Act like God in the sense, you know, you can uh, portray the attributes of Christ. Then he empowers you for victory. You know, he empowers you, strengthens you to be victorious. You don't have to walk out this morning thinking, you know, okay, I have had a high, you know, Sunday high in the service, but Monday I'm going to have the Monday blues. You don't have to walk out like that. Why? You are different this morning. You have the Holy Spirit in you. The Spirit of God is dwelling in you. And the one who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, the same Spirit is dwelling in you. And he's going to give you victory. He will give you victory. That is why he's there. You don't have to be a defeated person. You don't have to live in defeat. The Spirit of God, he will help you to conquer every enemy. When Joshua entered uh, the land of Canaan, God helped him to conquer every enemy, defeated. But today, your enemies are not physical outside, but some are in the flesh. Your enemy, all the enemies, some are in the fallen nature, the sexual immorality, impurity, lust, greed, unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred. The Holy Spirit is there to help you to conquer all those things. Then outside, you know, you have other challenges in the office. The Holy Spirit is there to help you to conquer all those things and to help you to be victorious. And the key is, He has already done this in your life. You don't have to be crying every day, Holy Spirit, now help me, help me, help me. And some things, you know, the Holy Spirit set me free. And the Holy Spirit says, I already set you free. My word says you are free. Now walk in the freedom. What does the Bible say? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. No longer to be subject to the yoke of slavery. So where the, where the Holy Spirit is in you. He's not in the church. He's not in the building. He is in you. He is in me. And He has given us the freedom. Amen. He has given you the freedom to respond. You know, if, if somebody is hard on you, rough on you, the Holy Spirit will give you the freedom to respond in a gentle way. You know, that's why the Holy Spirit is there. So remember, the Holy Spirit of God is there to strengthen you. 
of course, there are so many other things in chapter 8. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is the one who, who gives you the spirit of adoption and tells that you are the sons and daughters of God. Amen? That you are a child of God. So then this morning, you know, Paul uh, is excited. Paul, you know, reaches a climax in the book of Romans. And he begins to magnify God. He begins to glorify God. He begins to praise God. Why? Because of what the Holy Spirit has already done. I'll just finish with this. You know, in, from chapter, verse 31, you know, you keep on reading. Paul is saying, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? Nobody can be against you. He did not even spare his own son, but offered him up for us all. How will he not also with him grant us everything? Nobody can be against you. God will grant you everything. Who can bring an accusation against God elect? Can anybody bring an accusation against you? Nobody. Why? God says you are not condemned. Okay. Um, who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? Because of you, we are being put to death all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. Paul says, no. In all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded mean what? Paul is saying, I am convinced. Nobody can change my mind. I am 100%. I am more than persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. God has taken up residence in you and he is there to give you victory. So I want you to lift your heads high this morning. Don't look down on you and say, you know, look with a spirit of condemnation. There's no condemnation. If you sin, there's provision. There's forgiveness. But not condemnation. You are not condemned. You are justified. You are destined to heaven. That is where you are going. And God has given you victory. He has set you free. You know, this is what the Holy Spirit has accomplished in you. You don't have to be asking Him. He has already done this in you. That's why Paul finishes this, Romans 8, with a glorious praise. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. So I want you to rise to your feet and just begin to thank God. And open your heart and say, Lord, I want to thank you for what you have done in my life. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for setting me free. Thank you, Lord, for the power. You have empowered me, Lord, to fulfill your law. Thank you, Lord, that you adopted me as your son, as your daughter, because the Holy Spirit of God is living in me. Thank you, Lord. The one who is in me is greater than the one who is in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Begin to affirm. You are beginning to confirm. The Holy Spirit will confirm to your heart. The Holy Spirit will empower you this morning. The Spirit of God will strengthen you this morning as you begin to believe what He has accomplished already. As you begin to believe what He has already done in your life. Yes, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Will you open your mouth and begin to thank God? Thank God. You don't have to ask this morning because it has all been done by Jesus on the cross and it has all been confirmed to you by the Holy Spirit of God. You can walk out this morning knowing that you are a child of God, knowing that you are justified, knowing that you have victory in Christ Jesus, knowing that for every situation there's power within you. The Spirit of God within you is there to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You deserve the glory.